My name is Anastasia Hudgens and I am a medical anthropologist. This is my humble little office where all the magic happens. And uh, before I tell you about like what my daily life is like, what kind of things that I do, what are the projects that I do, what do I love about medical anthropology, um, let me give you a quick rundown on the scope of medical anthropology so you can see like okay this might be what she does but I'm interested in that over there let me learn more about that so here we go so let me tell you some big picture stuff about medical anthropology it came out of the field of ethnomedicine ethnomedicine super interesting study of how different societies around the world treat illness uh, diagnose it heal it, interpret it, uh, yeah, really interesting. More contemporary anthropologists are, um, may study things like health inequality and how health inequalities are a reflection of social inequalities. For instance, um, how is it that racism leads to a higher maternal mortality rate among uh, black women, say in New Jersey, where the rate is just uh, phenomenally high? For black women. Um, medical anthropologists today might also study what are the social, cultural, environmental factors that impact health. Um, might also study what is the uh, experience of suffering from an illness. Um, so, you know, really social in nature, understanding that illness is biological but so much of illness is influenced by society and so much of the experience of an illness is influenced also by society and you know how you interpret the world all right so now that you know that let me tell you the thing that i just love the most about medical anthropology and that's some of the projects that i'm working on or some of the projects that i have worked on um, locally i am outside of philadelphia Locally, I work with my local Department of Health to understand the uh, opioid epidemic um, and its impact in this city. So as you know, there's just a huge problem with opioid overdose and opioid use. And in Philadelphia, it's a multiracial, multigenerational, uh, multigender, multiclass problem. And so it affects a lot of people and robs a lot of people a joy uh, robs people of years of their life um, and not just the people who use but also their uh, their family their friends their kin so um, the Department of Health is interested in addressing this through programs and policies and as a medical anthropologist I do research that would help them gather what they need to know in order to make a sound program or a sound policy that will have consequences for treatment or for some aspect that would uh, benefit someone who uses opioids. So um, in one project I was involved with, um, we sought to find the hidden population of drug users in Philadelphia to see where you know where could the a program connect with them to make harm reduction services available to people so that if they needed it they could use it um, the the service that is like a clean needle um, uh, Narcan to reverse an overdose these sorts of things um, another interesting project that I worked on recently was with an international organization that uh, seeks to address HIV rates in vulnerable populations. So this project took place in Somalia and I traveled to Somalia and worked with an interpreter and worked with local organizations that help people who have HIV or to help prevent HIV, the spread of HIV. And the goal here was to learn about uh, these, again, these hidden populations of people who uh, use intravenous drugs or take drugs intravenously uh, or who are engaged in uh, 
I don't want to say sex work because that's a different thing, but uh, the exchange of sex for the things that you need to live, money, food, your children's education, a safe place to live, uh, you know, you know, clothes. So who exchanged sex for that? Also, um, men who have sex with men, very, you know, taboo topic there, but, um, you know, sure, it happens just like it does everywhere else. So uh, I was tasked with finding the different populations, and I really relied on my interpreter a lot because he uh, was well connected with a lot of different groups of people in Somalia and could tap into those different communities. Um, and we interviewed, gosh, probably over 70 people uh, and, you know, to learn about for people who are engaged in sex work, how is it organized and where does it happen and who is involved? Is there a hierarchy where there's somebody uh, trying to profit off of women's vulnerability? And so with this information, we were able to kind of figure out where you might have harm reduction services available that would say make condom condoms available for people who wanted them, um, to educate people about condoms, to educate people about you know how you transmit HIV, um, how you catch HIV, and to also let people know it's not the end of the world if you have it, and you know, but it's best to avoid it if you can, of course. Um, so those are a couple of interesting projects that I worked on recently. And so in this, so what is medical anthropology? It is using um, these tools, these methods that are unique to anthropology uh, that really try to get an insider's perspective about uh, a particular topic, in this case, drug use or, um, you know, these illicit activities. Um, and you know, getting, putting all that within a context of why is it that people are engaged in this? Well, you've got decades of war, you've got refugee status, you've got, um, you know, internal migration within the countries, um, and that affects how people are able to connect or not connect to their networks. And without your network, you don't have a social safety network. And uh, without a social safety network, it all comes down to you to take care of your children or you to take care of yourself. And if you have to do something for the well-being of your kids or your own well-being, you're probably going to do it. So, you know, these methods allowed us to see this and the theory in anthropology helps us understand that we're not just individuals living in a society. No one is just an individual, you know, just like, hey, I'm unique. No, you're, you're subject to the rules of your society. You're a reflection of your society and all the history and all the structures that go with that. So, you know, medical anthropology draws on these theories that, uh, that give life to cultural anthropology and to help us make sense of the world and how people's interpretations of random things are socially structured. Um, so the methods, the, uh, the theory, and then as medical anthropologists, you, it's, it's an applied anthropology, right? I'm a practicing anthropologist. So I take these things and the findings and then collaborate with my client to help them design a program or a policy that will ameliorate life for this community of people that they're dedicated to serving. So that is the beauty of medical anthropology. Uh, and that's all I have to say about that.